the group favourite, the highest ranked player in the group, the world number three and the reigning European Masters champion, Judd Trump. First frame, Judd Trump's a break. Just a quick update on the other table. Graham Dot now leading Martin Gould by two frames to one. Early days in frame four. For what it's worth, though, Dot leading by 47 points to four and at the table scoring. Well, in these last two groups, he's only two groups, in fact, in Championship League this year. Judd Trump has been a first-day monster. He won all four matches he played on day one of Group 4 for the loss of only one frame. And in Group 5 here, earlier this week, on Tuesday and Wednesday, he won all four matches in day one of Group 5 for the loss of only two frames. So he'd love to repeat that. And even though he was beaten in the semi-finals last night by Ricky Walden, it wasn't his fault. He was 2-1 up, playing nicely. He played a couple of good safety shots in frames four and five, and Walden knocked in fantastic reds and went on to make a pair of centuries. So if he can keep that attitude and that sensible approach, Trump, he remains quite clearly the man to beat in group six. Now, has he been fortunate there, catching the jaws of the pocket? That was a, a wholesale mistake. He's left nothing easy, though. wasn't easy but it went in without touching the sides. Lee Hang was off to a flyer in beating Michael White 3-0. Made a really well compiled century in the first frame. He's not the only newcomer to the tournament who's made a good start. I can tell you that Graham Dot is in an unassailable position against Martin Gould on the other table. 95 ahead with just the colours left, so he's about to complete a 3-1 victory. Dot, like Lee Hang, entering the tournament this year in Group 6. I was just talking to my colleague David Hendon who will be commentating on the next match over on table two between Ben Wollaston and Ricky Walden. A 
and we both agreed that if you underestimate Lee Hang, you do so at your peril. He's got a very easy rhythm around the table. Nothing blocks or interrupts the routine. And when it comes to doing the routine time and time again, he's your man. 32. Forty. Another cool pot. It's a pity for Lee Hang on this form. He didn't qualify for next week's German Masters. Lost 5-4 in the first qualifying round to Andrew Higginson. We will see Lee Hang, though, in the shootout at Watford in early February. Got a very interesting first-round match there against Mark Williams, who played so well to win Group 5 here last night. Not that the draw in the shootout makes any real difference, because over 10 minutes, anyone can beat anyone. One thing this week that Li Hang will be very interested in is the draw for the China Open. The qualifiers start on Saturday at Barnsley in the Metrodome. As yet, we don't know who plays who. Although, by the end of the day, maybe I'll be able to give you that information. Clearly, the China Open is close to Li Hang's heart. It's his national open, after all. But if you didn't hear the news announcement, which was made actually during the final of the Masters on Sunday, you'll be astounded to know that the China Open this year, and indeed for the next four years, will carry prize money of over one million pounds. It's the only million pound event apart from the World Championship. The winner will receive, come early April, 225,000 pounds. And you wouldn't completely discount the man at the table being in the shake-up. He's done really well in two Chinese events so far this season. 94. 
And he's emphasising his skills here this morning. It was a century in the opening frame against Michael White. The black for a century in the opening frame against Judd Trump. Lee Hang 102 and the first frame. Again, excellent stuff from Lee Hang. Trump played a poor safety shot. It caught the jaws of a top pocket. Lee potted a red to a distant ball pocket. And the rest was just excellent. 102 break. Lee Hang has played four frames this morning. He's won all four. And in this one, he leads Jet Trump by a frame to zero. And Trump is well acquainted with Lee Hang. They've only played on one occasion in a world ranking event. The last 64 of the 2013 Wuxi Classic it was. And helped by four half centuries, Lee ran out a 5-2 winner. Make no mistake, this man is more than capable. Over on table two, by the way, the next offering is Ben Wollaston against Ricky Walden. Wollaston, a losing semi-finalist in Group 5 last night. Walden, the losing finalist. They were both beaten by the same fellow, Mark Williams. That's more like it from Trump, who needs a big bounce here. No, not big enough. Yellow ball. Okay. Just front wall. <coughs> you couldn't help but wonder after that major disappointment on Saturday for him when Trump was 5-2 up on Kyron Wilson and was beaten 6-5 in the Masters semi-final. You couldn't help but wonder what his attitude and reaction would be here. Well, I thought yesterday, and indeed on Tuesday, it was exemplary. Played well. OK, he didn't win the group, but he was entirely professional. And that reflects really well on him. This table is not right at the top of the league when it comes to being the most responsive for screwing back. Let me tell you that. But Trump's Q power, I think it's second to none. For me, there are many aspects of his game that are second to none. Great to watch. Seven. Eight. 
that was unexpected though and for Lee Hang a pleasant surprise well he's never been involved in the championship league before right now he's thinking I like this But he didn't like that. Six. We hung six. Well, he's left a choice of a couple of reds as Lee Hang. Well, I think that was a fluke, you know. I think he played the other one and that one went in. He's had no luck with the position. He can't wish for everything. No thought, of course, of potting the pink. What a great safety that was with the use of side. And, OK, he was lucky in the end to get the snooker. He didn't play in behind the pink. He couldn't work that one out. No one could. But to get the cue ball where he did, and the way he did it, again underlines that Trump has got a really good tactical brain. Just needs to use it more at opportune moments. Play that one almost as a shot to nothing. Realising that if he missed the red at that pace, more than likely the brown would cover it and he would be on a choice of ball colours or pink. But Lee Han going for the swerve. Not only going for the swerve, getting it. And look at the wide ball on the precipice, almost hanging over the pocket. Nicely done. The way the, the cue ball was situated there and the way he was queuing, that blue was missable. Now it's a really good chance. Six. 
Sam. Well, I don't know how much English Li Hang speaks, but he certainly knows how to say white, please, meaning can you clean it? And so the referee Rob Spencer doing just that. most slender individual, Lee Hang, not the most tall individual either. Certain players might be able to reach this, not him, but that's the great thing with that little extension to the back of the queue. On shots like this where it's borderline the reach, you can play them without having recourse for the rest. Where's the cue ball? Ooh, just okay. Nineteen. Must tell you a story. I was sitting next to John Virgo in the press room at the Masters on Sunday night. He was in there watching the first four frames of the final session, and, and then he was going to take over in the commentary box afterwards. And there were a couple of occasions where the white went close to going in off. And I was very disappointed he didn't give me a, a personal rendition of where's the cue ball going. Kept his powder dry for when millions were listening. That phrase you hear so often, I've said it myself on many occasions, solid but unspectacular. That really does fit the bill with Lee Hang, with the addition of a couple of words. He's extremely solid, and on occasions he can be spectacular. break increases to 37 it's getting towards frame winning proportions now especially with three open reds to zone in on after this
Bolting. Too hard for the ball colours. Not hard enough for the pink. A nice little snooker here might be prudent. Lee, 36 points to the good, 43 left on the table. Lee Hang, 40. No contact apart from on the blue. And although Lee has a pot on, there's no way he's going to take it. The cue ball will be replaced. Didn't even bother to get out of his chair, and who can blame him? This was a no-brainer. So Trump can't afford to miss again. Well, I'll tell you what, that could have been worse. OK, this red might cut, but it's very thin. Not a gimme. The in-off could be on. Oh, again! He just avoids it. Had he gone in-off... He would have still been OK. He'd have been 37 in front with 35 on, but now the frame is absolutely wrapped up. Six. Hang six on the frame. Well, on this Thursday morning here at the Rico Arena in Coventry, Judd Trump, rather like Michael White before him, is being given a rude awakening by a gentleman called Lee Hang. Lee has played five frames so far against two very talented individuals, and he's won all five. In this match, he leads Judd Trump 2 0. can inform you, by the way, that over on table two, where David Hendon is commentating, Ben Wollaston and Ricky Walden have begun their first frame. Nothing yet significant to report, apart from the fact that Wollaston's at the table on a break of 35. So you might be wondering what's occurring after these two matches. Well, the afternoon session begins here at 2 o'clock local time. Here on table one, it is Michael White against Graham Dot. And over on table two at two o'clock, Ben Wollaston takes on Martin Gould. Third play. Just trying to break. Well, Trump finding himself in an, a pretty unaccustomed position in Championship League this year. Certainly in the round-robin phase of a group, facing a 2-0 deficit.
can the Lee Hang winning streak continue? Well, the head was up a little bit there. It was a difficult pot, high tariff. A little lucky to get the cue ball back where he did, though. Referee Rob Spencer there saying, can you please do your shirt up? You might have noticed when he's been leaning over the table, we have seen various garments, let's put it that way. <laughs> Mind you, being a, a snooker player myself in the past, I do appreciate that sometimes it is difficult to keep everything tucked in. Foul. 
particularly handful. One of those matches where Joe Trump hasn't lost his patience, he hasn't lost his discipline, but things just aren't going right. Missed one or two, he wouldn't normally miss. And Lee Hang is just keeping on, keeping on, as they say in America. If you ever look at the world ranking list and you didn't see him play in the China Championship where he reached the semi-final and then the World Open where he was a quarter-finalist, you might think, how on earth is Lee Hang world number 36? Well, if you've watched this morning, you'll know why. And then, as if to prove my point, in the opposite way, he misses a black. He would fully expect to knock in. Well, I don't think Trump's got a full pocket here. And playing at that pace, that was asking an awful lot. It really was. Again, though, he could have done so much more damage than this. Now that was unlucky in the extreme. The only ball he could have possibly left easy was the one he has left. And to do that, it's had to flick off the blue. What a bonus for Lee Hang. What a bonus. Well, Although position there isn't. Yes, he's on the brown but being so close to it. Tricky. Queuing away from the brown, effectively to pot it, and indeed with below centre striking. Five. Even though cue ball and object ball were in close proximity, there was no real chance of a push shot there. We hung five. Well, he started to miss a few balls as Lee hang. Lovely kiss from Trump, getting the black out. Not available straight away, though. And if the blue doesn't go past the pink, again, he's been unlucky. Well, 
well, sorry to be repetitious, but he's not having a kind run at all. Just Trump one. I can tell you, on the other table, Ricky Walden has come back from well behind in the first frame to snatch it on the final black. And so Walden leads Ben Wollaston 1-0. Oh, with cue ball so close to the top cushion and that pot tough anyway that was risky The way he played that at that pace, I think he thought he was going to make contact with the brown and hold on the red to the middle. He's still on the red, but to the opposite middle. Another good pod from Lee Hang. Very good. Four or five awkward reds close to the top cushion, an awkward red close to the right hand side cushion up towards the ball line. But Lee building a useful lead here. 14. Wouldn't it be something if on his introduction to the Championship League, not just this year, but any year, in his first two matches, he were to whitewash a couple of multiple world ranking event winners. Michael White's won three world ranking titles. Judd Trump, eight. Twenty-two. Now potting that red, freeze another one. No. Now Lee will have done his maths here. He will know that if he can pot the three open reds 
with three blacks. He'll be sufficiently in front. Thirty. Not to need one of the orchid reds. He'll be, in fact, 62 ahead with 59 on. The Championship League and Lee Hang go together Very agreeably. 46. Quite often in this tournament, because of the, the busyness of it and the, the unique format, players who come in for the first time struggle initially. Not Mr. Lee Hang. A snooker required already. And if he pots this red, there's no way back. Three. What a debut. What a debut. He's got one more match to play today 59. against Graham Dodd, second on this afternoon on this table. It will be very interesting to see that because he's a man in stroke, as they say. Conga through to the red directly, so playing a, a plant. And you guessed it, it's in there. Could he make another century? Hold on. Oh, almost the fluke. Not in. But it is a victory for Lee Hang by three frames to nil. He made breaks of 102 and 40 to lead 2 nil.